right? God is fundamental. It's intrinsic. It's innate. It's here now. It's the fabric, like I was saying, it's the fabric of the shirt instead of the shape of the shirt. It's gold instead of the ring, right? Here, we could focus on the ring, the shape of it, what it means. But really what it is, is gold. And if you're no longer fooled by form so much, if you allow yourself to become less distracted by what appears to have form and label and interpretation, then you are beginning to shine that intrinsic light of God straight through the illusion of that gremlin way of thinking and operating and programmed interpretations. And this is where that peace, this is where that abidance, this is where that love of God begins to become this fragrant experience that just permeates every other perception. This is when you start to know God in its formlessness, not as an idol, not as an object, not as a guru, not as a statue, not as a picture, but as the living, intrinsic, inseparable space that is always present, whether you're feeling down, whether you're feeling high, whether you're judging yourself, whether you're in total acceptance of yourself. This is why I've called it quantum acceptance, is the fact that everything is already accepted, including your non-acceptance, because God does not only live in one house. It doesn't live in a particular land. It doesn't live on a particular planet. It doesn't go by any cultural rules. It doesn't only live in certain morals. God is all across the board, ever present, intrinsically here all the time. Right now it's listening to my voice. God is speaking and God is listening all simultaneously through the illusory filter of separation duality, these different vehicles. But essentially, I am talking to myself. You could say, you are listening to yourself. So beyond the mind's power of discernment and interpretation and labeling. There is a power of knowing that has never left your experience. In fact, you've never experienced anything outside of it without it, and you never shall. You've never experienced an outside world. You've only ever experienced what state of being you were in, what frequency you were vibrating at, what state of consciousness you were occupying, you were conscious of, you were calibrated to with your attention. You only ever experience what you experience, very simply put. I mean, no one has ever experienced anything outside of what they experience. The only thing you've ever experienced is an experience. You've never experienced a non-experience. <laughs> you've never experienced the world. You've only experienced an experience that you've called the world. But that experience has occurred inside of consciousness due to awareness, due to consciousness. It's made up of awareness, just like your dream at night. You never experienced a world in your dream at night. You've only experienced the experience you were dreaming. And that all happened in the mind. And you know that when you wake up into your physical state, you remember, you know, it was all a dream. It was all the mind conjuring up appearances, perceptions. The dynamic energy of the mind was hallucinating. It was imagining. It was producing this miraculous illusion of space and time and distance and physical bodies and relationships. It's not that different, my friends. The waking dream is not that different. And this is what you realize when you wake up into God, into the essence of all that is. And you become, as Ra says, one with all that there is. To become the creator is to become all that there is. Doesn't mean that your conscious physical mind is suddenly aware of what's happening on all the trillions of planets in every little nanosecond, nano container of the universe. It just means that not just, it is profound, but it means that you are, your identity, your sense of what you are is shifting from form to formless, from appearance to essence, from transient or appearing, disappearing, appearing, disappearing, appearing, disappearing, to timeless, from bias and personal preference. Not that you won't have preferences, because I still don't really enjoy goat cheese, but your identity shift. As a person, I still don't appreciate goat cheese, but that's not my identity, you know? So if I'm force-fed goat cheese, I still don't like it. Mesh, stop doing that. Stop force-feeding me goat cheese. But the essence of my identity is not obscured by that experience. I am more identified with the essence of all that there is, that non-dual universal presence, than I am identified with the appearances of the preferences that come and go, come and go, come and go. So in a sense, you could say I'm abiding as a stability that's unaffected by the display of form, yet has an intimate unity and inseparability with it. 
Because just like in your dream at night, all things happen inside of that awareness, inside of that mind. It's not separate. So to be non-attached, if you will, or to be free, to abide as this naked state of God, of isness, of I am, doesn't mean there is no intimacy. Doesn't mean it's a mental, aloof, disassociated state where you're just the observer. You know, that's a stage you can go through if you want to. You don't even have to, you can bypass that stage for the most part. Depends on what kind of teachings you follow and and how the language of that teaching is kind of indoctrinating the experience of what it's like to be awareness. Because language is very powerful. Language really does shape and texture and flavor and bias and distort your experience of God. That's why I use as many different ways as I can to describe it so that your mind becomes independent from the words used. So it can, it can begin to see it from all these angles and all these flavors and all these textures so that a true or more mystical, more intimate, more silent understanding of God dawns that transcends any particular path or angle or verbiage into it. So God is formless. Let's rest with this understanding a little bit more before we proceed. And let's relate this to the experience of self-acceptance for a little bit longer as well. So if you are in a state of resistance towards what you are or judgment, let's say judgment of what you are, what you've done, what you experience, if you're not there yet, uh, not being good enough and so forth, huh? You all know this state. I mean, it's very human. It's very normal. No problem. But just recognize it. Know yourself so that you can accept yourself. If you don't know what's going on, it's harder to accept it. It's harder to forgive it. It's harder to release it back to the basic space of God, the basic space of the Creator, the basic space of Source Awareness. So it's easier if you know what's going on and you can see that it's not really who you are. It's just a little gremlin talking. It's just a little programmed filter. It's just a little self-preservation safety mechanism that's trying to keep you safe. It's that outdated substitute parent you no longer really need, but you think you still do because you're so used to it. Just chattering away in the backseat of your car. This like little hitchhiker that you hired when you were four years old because mommy and daddy couldn't provide you with the emotional support that you needed. So to see that that's not who you are, but just to understand that's part of the contents and it's part of the ways that you're distorting your perception of contents. It's how you're interpreting life. It's how you're filtering what's now, what's here. It's how you're obscuring yourself from yourself. So to just acknowledge this, just to recognize this, without the judgment this time, that acceptance, going from resistance state to acceptance state, self-acceptance specifically here, going from a self-judgment state, the contraction of self-judgment, the pain, the separation of self-judgment, to the wholeness, and the ease and that soothing experience of unwinding the judgment and releasing it into a, a state of acceptance. What this does is it shifts the mind from form and label and separation to this more naked, formless understanding or state of being. 